of Drawing Code, Scratch Jr., and this is the Harry Potter edition. I hope you like that introduction. That kind of gives you an idea of what you'll be making today, and so we're going to get started. The first thing I'd like to do is draw Harry Potter, and Harry Potter, the style I draw is kind of a cartoon-style Harry Potter. Not super realistic, but you can definitely tell it's Harry Potter. So we're going to start out with his hair. So we're going to draw along the outside and just kind of make some, go in and out with your lines to just kind of make his hair um, like the top of his head here. And we're going to color it in dark brown. Select the freeform tool and that'll let us draw the face. So we're going to draw the line for the bottom of the face. You go up around, trace over where his bangs were, the hair that's coming down. And then when you fill in the skin color, it'll actually fill it in rather than cover up the hair, which Scratch Jr. will do. We're going to zoom in a little bit here, and we're going to draw the scar on his forehead. Well, those are things that uh, kind of the unmistakable marks of Harry Potter here. We're going to have a scar, then we're going to draw his glasses. So this kind of definitely can tell it's Harry Potter. So draw his glasses. I draw... Big glasses and big eyes for Harry Potter here. I usually stamp, use the stamp tool when I'm making circles, but when I tried it with this, it can it all the time would just stick together and I couldn't get them apart. So I'm drawing the bridge of the glasses and then the ear pieces over. We'll draw the ears later. Now I use the circle tool, draw very large eyes here inside of the glasses. Now you can fill them the in black like I'm doing. You can fill them in white and have a black pupil. I'm filling them in black and using white, like kind of a glint in your eye, like it's shining off the eye a little bit. And so there I'll use a just a dot, so white circle, click on it and it makes the dots. And then I'm gonna zoom in here. So let's zoom in. And when I zoom in, it lets me make smaller dots, okay? So when you make the same touch on your screen, you get a smaller dot. You can position those however you like on the eyes. And then I'm just gonna make a tiny mouth. Nothing real fancy, just a little smile. Okay. All right, zoom back out. Make sure it's positioned there on that top corner area. And I'm going to put some eyebrows here for Harry Potter, and then I'm going to draw the ears. I need some ears so it holds up his glasses. We'll draw a little ears there. The next thing we're going to draw is the robe. So we're going to draw the robe flowing back. However you want to make it flow through there. I might make it a little bit longer next time when I'm doing it. Follow along his chin there so you get a solid um, color. I know I keep saying that, but if you don't, it'll cover up where his chin is. So I use the yellow tool um, to make some kind of marks on his robe. Um, underneath his robe is a different color. Scratch Jr. doesn't really have the, the Gryffindor colors that he uses when he plays Quidditch. So I'm going to change that yellow here in a little bit. Now, drawing the broomstick. We're running out of room on the end. Um but we're going to fit in a broom pretty much. So draw the broomstick there and the tail of the broomstick. And I'd like to fill that in, usually a different color brown. And so I'm going to put the brown there and then make gold or yellow trim marks as well on the broom. 
you can decorate this however you'd like, however you want to make your Harry Potter look. Remember, we are going to shrink this down, so it's not quite as important um, when you are shrinking your characters. I'll make a line here, and then I'm going to make the boots coming over top. His pants, his leg will come over top the broomstick and go towards the bottom of the broom. Fill that in, and then I'm going to draw some brown or dark brown boots here. This one boot, because we only see the one leg over here. You can kind of, if you want to, you can draw both. Just stagger them. And then fill that in dark brown. So there we have Harry Potter. Now I think I am going to change the color of that gold. I, I don't like it as much on the um, his robe. So after I put this hand on, just a small hand on there, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that yellow. I got rid of that. I'm going to put some orange patches there, just wherever you want. Kind of just, it's up under the robe. It's showing the bottom part of the robe. Let's just fill those in, use the paint bucket to fill it in. And then maybe I'll put a bottom, one down here at the bottom. And I think... Yeah, go ahead and cover up that yellow one that I had on the wrist. Put one down towards the bottom of the robe. But I might put one all the way across instead of that one on the bottom there. I think I might go ahead and put that all the way across. So when you are done with it, you can click your check mark. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back in though. Hit the paint editor. I'm going to change that one to all the way down along the bottom edge of the character. And then I'm going to hit my check mark. That'll put Harry Potter onto my scene. You might have noticed I had a castle on my screen. Now, Scratch Jr. does not have a castle to choose from. You're, you're welcome to draw one. What I a lot of times will do on ones that where I want to have a more realistic background, I'll choose a, a picture from an online site. Just chosen this castle here. It's a beautiful castle. And the first part you saw was a, um, there was a, I took it and put it into an editor where I made it a watercolor finish. The second one there was the actual picture. So here's the uh, background that we have. Now this is Harry Potter's code and it's on our title screen. You might see all these orange messages and be like, what is going on? Because especially when you see messages that have the same thing happening, like two over one up multiple times. Well, that's so more than one script can run at one time, which makes it go very fast. So that's what that's for. The same thing with the golden snitch. So you see a lot of them, it looks the same. It's like, why not have just a an orange a message and then four down instead of two twos. Well, that makes it go faster that way, the way that I have it. And you see how they're just kind of trailing off real fast. But that's up to you what you put on that page. On this second page that we have, it's the golden snitch. And find the golden snitch. And I have a real long script there. But what's happening? Notice this, the golden snitch is flashing on the screen. So it's flashing all around because it's hiding. It's moving around. And then I have it appear, but just for a very, very short amount of time. And then when Harry Potter touches it, it sends out the message for to um, show the large Harry Potter and the large golden snitch. Those are the buttons and the messages received. Up arrow was a, an orange message. Down arrow was a red message. The two green flags, when it gets to that page, they start automatically. And those allow it to kind of kind of shakes back and forth and flies. His, his uh, broom's not going smoothly at that moment. Um, but you're trying to find the golden snitch. You use the up and down arrow keys. This one's kind of a lucky one. You know, if you run into it, you know, it's a little harder to find it. On this third page, when it gets to the third page, this is kind of like a Flappy Bird game. So on the two sides, I have columns. They're black columns. All they are are black rectangles. And I had to make two for each side. And what they do is they cover up the whatever you want to come out. I have, looks like stone pieces of the castle. They're rectangles too. And what I'm showing you here is that when I hit play or the green flag, it waits a tiny bit and then it's going to go 20 over. So that one comes out from behind the block. It goes to the very end and it waits 
and then it starts over again. And this keeps cycling over and over, but I only hit play on the one, so that's why you only saw one. So however you do this, you have to put the different amounts of time so that the blocks come out at different times. There's the arrow keys. So when I touch the arrow key, it sends an orange message. The orange message is going to Harry Potter. He opens it and goes up. The red message goes to Harry Potter. He opens it. He goes down. That green that you see there just makes it disappear. Okay, so I have a timer on uh, set on Harry Potter that when the green flag is clicked, it cycles for 99, which is not 99 seconds. It's like 10 seconds, but three times in a loop. So if I go 30 seconds, okay, without touching one of those columns and I go, I use my room, I use my buttons to go up and down and get around and don't touch anything, then I win the game. If I hit into something, then I lose and it says game over and it goes back to the first page. So there it says you win. This is a final page here. It's not part of the game, really. It's if you click on the wand, the end of the uh, wand lights up, and it says the end. Harry Potter goes across the screen. I have three kind of a bright white circle, a small one to light the tip of the wand up at first, and then that disappears and a little bit larger circle um, appears, and then another circle. A lot of times when I don't want an object on the screen when I start, I'll have it hidden and then I'll make it appear. And there you have our project. I hope you had as much fun working on it as I did. Harry Potter is one of my favorite book and movie series, and I found this a lot of fun to make. I would appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and share below. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Until next time.